yeah, we take a slightly different approach because, I mean, I always write either on, on piano or on guitar, uh, but then I write it up in a score writing program called Sibelius. Um, just because I like seeing the dots written out and I like the visual aspect as well as hearing the music back. Um, and then I take the scores and the MIDI to the rest of the band and they all, even though it sounds like lift music when it's being played out of the programme, people, like, the five of us know what it's going to sound like when we actually play it. Um, yes, I suppose in that sense it is quite an unusual way for a band to work, but it's the way I work when I'm doing other compositions as well and it's the way a lot of other composers work. So I think um, to, to get your head around Sibelius as well will give you you know, another avenue in terms of music theory. Why I, I feel that you can be slightly more adventurous when you discover these new things that other artists have done. So when we're looking at a certain chord sequence or a certain rhythm that a, a band has done in the 80s or the 90s, you think, I like that. How have they done that? And how can I do that without playing exactly the same thing? Or what, what's... You know what's the reasoning behind that? What's the music? Like, what's the music doing there to make it sound like that? So, when you start to dissect music, you'll find there's a lot of connections that you can then use to put into your own compositions. It's potentially, it is like learning a new language, but you know that it's the reason behind everything, everything music-based that everyone likes. So it's it's nothing to be scared of. It's just it's making the links really, the links between Beethoven and one direction, if that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah.